three or four words, a pithy message that can actually speak to them to get them to vote for you? That their lives need to be filled with possibilities too. But I'll tell you one other thing. Technology can be used particularly with young people to re-engage them in the process. You know, young people live in their smartphones. So one of the things that I would do is regularly address the American people and ask them to take out their smartphones and vote on a couple questions instead of, you know, just voting on American Idol or Facebooking each other. You know, tell me, what do you think? Should we go to zero-based budgeting so we know how our money's being spent? Press one for yes, two for no. Great, yes, sorry. The, uh, the, the, the trade bill is a concern over in the Senate. Where are you on that? Do you think that perhaps it, it gives a, too much flexibility to the president as far as fast tracking is a concern, or do you think that you know should be my done? my position on this trade bill has been very simple from the beginning. I'd like to know what's in it. So, Mr. President, just tell us what's in it. I, I'm a big believer in free trade, but I also have seen a track record of this president, which is he negotiates lousy deals. And this is a complicated deal. So this is a deal with 11 other countries, and we still don't know what's in it. Why won't he give a speech and say, these are the things that we're committing to, and these are the things that these other nations are committing to, and this is what we're going to get out of it. He won't. He talks in big generalities. And we've seen this before with this president. Obamacare was a lot of generalities, and the details turned out to be much different. So I'd just like to know what's in it. Do you think that the Republicans in the upper chamber, and in the lower chamber for that matter, are perhaps caving too much right now to the Well, to the you know, I, I'm not in those chambers, and so I'm not going to get tied up in their process. But my own position, I'll let them speak for themselves, but my own position is, Mr. President, tell us what's in it. And if you won't tell us what's in it, then why should we trust you that what's in it is good for us. Absolutely. Carly, you have um, tremendous private sector technology experience, um, and you've mentioned it as ways to engage the voting public. How do you feel about it as far as information gathering with the Patriot Act that's come under such fire on the Senate floor this weekend? You know, I think this is one of the reasons why people are frustrated with the political class. How long have we known that the Patriot Act was coming up? I mean, it's been, this date is not a surprise to anyone. And yet, somehow, over and over and over, we come down to the wire and nobody's figured it out. I mean, goodness, we should have been looking at this for quite a while now. Uh, my own view is it's not particularly helpful to ask telephone companies to do what the government's doing. I think it would be helpful for the NSA as well as our other intelligence agencies to be a bit more transparent about why they believe Section 215 is necessary. Has that really helped them? How has it helped them? Not to divulge sources and methods, but again, to be more transparent so that people understand it. Absolutely. What about the others who haven't asked questions? Uh, Kristen, yes. you mentioned specifically that you want to see a reduction in revenue as far as tax goes and drastic simplification. Is that a, a, an endorsement of a flat tax or a fair tax type system? Well, look, I think both of those are good ideas, but um, and each of those could be implemented in a way that doesn't particularly simplify the tax code. It may simplify rates, but it may also mean that we have lots of deductions. So my before I endorse a particular idea, what I am clear about is that as a design principle for any idea, we need to have vast simplification. So my principle, honestly, would be lower every rate, close every loophole. Close every one. We can argue about the ones we want to put back in. And the government needs less revenue. Not the same amount of revenue. Not more revenue. Less revenue. Going, going into the uh, debates here, uh, there are going to be requirements as far as percentages of, of a polling, how much money you're getting. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, as far as I know, there's only one criteria, which Fox News laid out. And maybe it's going to change, but what they said was um, in the top 10 average of five polls. So I think it's helpful to understand the goal, and I'm going to go work hard to meet the goal. Do you think it's unfair or, or no? You know, I come from a world where you lay out the goals. My job is to go meet the goals, so that's what we're going to do. Absolutely. And Carly, um, they have talked about you, the public has, as you know, being able to take on Hillary woman on woman and how you wouldn't be a sexist viewpoint attacking this poor woman standing on the other side of the stage. What substance do you bring with that? What 
specific attacks will you take Hillary on woman on woman? Well, you know, first I have to say that um, I think it's pretty clear already that the progressive left is going to try the war on women thing over and over again. Um, Planned Parenthood just came out with a big um, campaign, I guess I would call it, that describes me as the greatest threat to women in America. So I think we can count on the progressive left discounting anyone who disagrees with them. My criticisms of Hillary Clinton have nothing to do with her gender or mine. They have to do with her track record. What has she accomplished? What has she accomplished? She's held a lot of very high titles. What has she accomplished? And why shouldn't we be concerned about her lack of transparency and trustworthiness?